Okay, so here's a video to introduce uh, you to AutoStacker. This is the post-processing software for lunar, solar, planetary uh, imaging that, uh, that most people in the, in the field of astrophotography use. So uh, this is AutoStacker 4. I will leave a link in the description below where you can download this, uh, this video. Uh, now version 4 is in beta, so it might be a little flaky. We might run into a few things that uh, I've never seen before. Uh, I'm used to using AutoStacker 3, but I figured I'd go ahead and give AutoStacker 4 a uh, demonstration here. So when you download AutoStacker, it comes as a zip file. And when you unzip the file, it unzips to a folder. And that folder is your, is your application. It's not like a traditional application where you have an installer that you, get it, that you install and then you can see it you know, down in your, uh, in your, in your, uh, your program uh, file. So it's not going to be like that. It's just going to be in a folder. So I've already opened it up and uh, it's pretty easy. There's basically three steps that you have to follow. Opening uh, the file, analyzing the file, and stacking the files. Uh, to begin with, I'm going to show you my SIR file. So this is a uh, SIR file captured with my Hydrogen Alpha Telescope, a uh, LUNT 80 millimeter double stack. Uh, this was uh, captured on January 2nd. It's uh, 1,000 frames. You can see down here in the corner, uh, 1,000 frames, and you can see it's playing through the frames right now. I'm going to go ahead and leave my cursor cross on so you can see where I'm pointing to. But anyway, we're going to close that. We're going to bring AutoStacker back to the front. And we're going to open up AutoStacker in the program. So uh, this is the folder that it's in. And here is the SIR file. So all you have to do is highlight it. And you can see that it brings it up into the other window here uh, as part of the application here. So now you can just close this and process this file here. The first thing you want to do is you want to click on an image stabilization uh, point. I don't know if the, the green square is going to show up in the feed here. On a monochrome image, it's really hard to see. But what I can do is I can click up here and now you can see. Now you can see the green square. This is the uh, anchor point for stabilizing the video clip here. You can change the size of this anchor point, this square, by hitting control one, which is the smallest point, and I'll move it off screen and you can't even see it because of the text that's uh, overwriting it. But as I uh, move it up here and increase the size, that's control two, that's control three, control four, control five, control six, control seven. You get the idea. I think it goes up to control seven. All right, so I'm gonna choose a, an anchor point of control four here, but I wanna place it over a contrasty area. Now this is a hydrogen alpha scope so I've got a, a really nice filament right here that I can place it over and you to do that you just hold down the control key and click and it's now moved that anchor point over this region right here. If you were uh, using a uh, white light solar film uh, and a color camera or such you would probably have sunspots so you would just put this anchor point on top of a sunspot and adjust the size. Now if your image is drifting you know left and right in the uh, frame then you want to make this uh, anchor point much larger because you want to keep that that anchor uh, subject matter inside this square the entire time. My camera is is tracking really well the the image of the Sun doesn't drift so I can use a fairly small anchor point here. The next step go over here if you're imaging, like I said, if you're imaging solar or lunar or doing deep sky recordings, uh, I've never used this for deep sky recordings, you would you choose surface. And for planetary uh, imaging, you would click here. I keep improved tracking uh, turned on. I keep crop turned on because I'm not worried about it drifting or anything. If your image is floating all over the, the, the frame, you may want to click expand. The next step to do is to analyze. So you're going to let it run through this, its little stabilization here and it's going to analyze each one of the individual frames. And it's already done. And you can see up here at the top the frame count. This is, this is, this is frame one here. I'm going to turn the magnifier on so you can see some of this stuff as well. 
And if I move this down here, you can see now we're at frame 1000. So you can you can manually position the cursor on any one of the any one of the frames in the video. The next step now that the the video has been analyzed is to look at this quality graph here. The way you read this quality graph is the best images are on the left side of the screen or actually this is this is frame 1 I should say that and then this is frame 1000 down here and top to bottom is the quality graph with the top being 100% the best image and the the worst images down here at the bottom you want to look at this little graph right here okay you don't want to stack anything that's below 50% i generally try to to keep everything from the 75% mark but this clip it's saying is not very good but if I click right here and you can see it dropped a, a, a green vertical bar here and if you look up here you can see that's 62 frames so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change this number here from 50 to 60 and I'm gonna tell it to stack the best 60 frames out of that 1000 frame video clip I always click on sharpen and blend raw for 50%. You can change this percentage. Maybe change it to 40, 45%. I'm going to leave it at 45% for this sample so you can see the difference between a sharpened stacked image and a unsharpened stacked image. I, I want it to save it in a separate folder. So what it's going to do is it's going to create a separate folder up here. And what it's going to it's going to label that folder something like AS uh, 60F and what that means is auto stacker and the 60 best frames now you, instead of frames you can do a percentage like let's say you want to stack the best 20% so or 25% so that 25% so let's change this to 25 and now it's going to create two images it's going to create one image that is stacked with the best 60 frames and it's going to stack another image with the best 25%, which would be 250 frames of 1,000. Mm -hmm. So that's really, I drizzle 1.5. It seems to help improve the quality of my images. You can try it with, with and without drizzling. I think 3x is too much, and I've never tried resample, so I can't really, uh, can't really speak to resampling. So one last thing you need to do before you start the stacking process is go back over to this screen here and you want to set alignment points on the image Now you can do it manually like say you can see these alignment points that I'm setting here that's the hard way to do it let let the software do it for you so clear those out and we're gonna start with 48 uh, pixel size alignment points and you just hit this place alignment point grid and it instantly populates your image with a bunch of alignment points and if you look over here you can see that it is placed 2795 alignment points on this image I can't even imagine trying to do that manually so you definitely want the software to do it I like this number to be around 4000 though on a full frame image of the Sun I like to get this up to somewhere close to 4000 so change the size of the alignment points and it will place more so just click on 32 here and hit place alignment points again and now it's placed 6347 so to me that's probably a little too much so something between 32 and 48 I could change this to 40 hit place alignment points and now it's uh, given me 4200 alignment points that's perfect in my book so the only thing left to do now is to hit the stack button here number three and let it stack so we're gonna we're gonna let that run and this is gonna take a couple of minutes because it is going to actually produce two images if you watch up here two folders are going to be produced one's going to be labeled uh, auto stacker or AS 60 F and one's going to be labeled AS 25 P which stands for 25 percent so we'll just uh, let this go let it do its job I'm going to speed the process up because this is going to take several minutes.
Okay, so there's our uh, 60 frame folder that it has just created. You can see it up here. So now it's working on stacking the best 25% or the best 250 frames, and it will create another folder once that's done. Okay, it's complete now. So you can see we've got two folders, 60 frame stack and 25% stack done here. So we're done now with Auto Stacker and we can and we can close this program. So let's go in and look at the best, let's say the best uh, 25%. So we'll open up this folder. You can see it's created uh, three files. This is a text file that just gives you some data on, on what it actually did. And then you have the I'm going to expand this here. You have the original stack of the best 250 frames, or 25%. And then remember, we uh, we clicked that box to actually uh, increase the uh, the sharpness. And you can see this is what comes out of the the best 250 frames stacked using the 25%. So let's go back up a level here. Actually, what I want to do is I want to open this TIFF file in a separate window here. And I want to bring this off to the side because I want to also open up the best 60%. And again, same situation. Now, I could take this image into another program called IMPPG and sharpen it up to where it looks like this. But I found that I really don't need to do that uh, too often. So we're gonna open up this frame now. And this is the file that is best 60% of the frames. So what I wanted to try to do is some sort of side-by-side -side comparison. And uh, let's get these up. So this is the best 60 frames and this is the best uh, 25 percent of the frames which would be 250 frames and I don't know if it comes across on on YouTube with the compression here but I can definitely tell that this image using only the best uh, 60 frames is a little bit sharper a little bit crisper than the uh, one that used 250 frames just seeing this my analysis of this is that it's always best to let's uh, go back to auto stacker here I'm gonna have to open this up so it's so it's my opinion uh, just looking at these two images here that you can you can tell this image is sharper than this image here and I think that's because using 250 of the frames it the, the quality graph it went way down here so this is this is 250 frames or 25 percent so you can see the quality is somewhere around 60 percent whereas up here when I selected this number I only used the the very very best that were considered 75 percent or greater in quality which ended up being 60 frames uh, I think 57 so we just rounded it off to 60 so again that's what you want to do is you want to select the, the only the highest point of the graph here to me it really does show in these two images that you know using the best of the best does create a better quality image I can see very tiny subtle differences between these two images so take that advice this is what I ended up with after bringing this monochrome image into Photoshop and adding a little color to it so there you have it